see y'all here this evening. Uh, let us all stand and turn to hymn number 429, 429, and sing, Lord, listen to your children pray. 1 John 5, 14 says this, If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we'll sing this twice.
Okay. Yeah, by now. That's right, that's right. All right. Um, well, I don't know if uh, it's when you get old, but I know I, I forgot things before. But uh, uh, Baron C. right here, uh, Shannon's grandfather, he wasn't having a, a pacemaker procedure, but he was just uh, he was just having a checkup about his face to make it. Uh, so we just found out everybody was uh, wanting to go up there and find out when he was having the surgery and everything. And then uh, to find out, uh, he thought he was having surgery at least two appointments ago. And then he still has it. So, but it's coming up. So it's usually an outpatient. Just keep him in prayer, although that's not the correct date. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, not my mistake. It's just uh, uh, He had a senior moment a couple of times. So... Uh, <laughs> So uh, be in prayer for him. Anybody else on there? Remember a young lady, her name is Sarah Nichols. Uh, she's going through some difficult times right now. Okay. So we got an unknown, uh, unspoken rather, per request on uh, Sarah Nichols. Keep her in prayer. Anyone else? I hear Rex over there whacking into the midnight hours. So uh, uh, hopefully that means some uh, cues are coming soon. Uh, so we, we shall see. Anybody heard anything else on Michelle Bledsoe? She over it. Uh, I know the test came back negative on, uh, I believe, uh, the other two. Is that correct, Wendy, for uh, Carl and uh, Donna? I did text Carl. It seems they were okay on uh, uh, last week, so uh, at the end of last week. So uh, we'll just continue to keep those in uh, prayer during this time. Good news, some can go upstairs, some can stay downstairs. So... Well, y'all do be in prayer for the, uh, uh, we have the uh, uh, council meeting uh, this Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, so we're trying to look at the next six months and what that's going to look like. So y'all be in prayer for those that are on the councils we're thinking through uh, the next six months and how we're going to do ministry. And do keep in prayer. Uh, First Baptist uh, uh, Calvin's, of course, they had their sanctuary burned down. And then, uh, Al said that North uh, First Baptist Church in North Augusta, had a truck uh, come in and hopefully they wasn't playing the song Come As You Are. Because hopefully nobody was hurt, you know. I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure that was brick and mortar. That was not a, you know, like, like this. You know, some some churches have this, you know, this kind of a structure. So uh, I do appreciate the brick and mortar, especially when you uh, have somebody run through it. So, uh, well, that's good news. That's good news. All right. You know that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, uh, we we uh, uh, do remember our brother in the Lord, uh, Philip Tucker, uh, for the his Augusta visit this week. Uh, you know, he's had a lot of seizures. It's just come a little bit. I guess a little bit more frequent than they used to. Uh, uh, so when you have about five or three, four weeks, it's a Cause for concern, definitely, and you have three in one after another episode. That's a lot. So we just think, uh, uh, like I told her, I don't know what she would do, and especially without uh, Linda Ricks and them helping them out, get to appointments and stuff. That is just a, such a blessing. And I know other people help them too here. Uh, it's just, uh, boy, I tell you, that that is just uh, such a blessing to have that, those friends in times of need like this. Uh, so we just uh, uh, lift Philip up. Hopefully the. Uh, Augusta will do, I think they're the ones that can do the special procedure he needs to have done, with uh, the screenings and the exams and so forth. So we're just praying uh, for our dear brother just to uh, maybe some medication or something. Uh, uh, they can get it right, whatever it is, because I know I've known people that's had seizures and 
Uh, they've had to just get uh, medicines adjusted, and, and they might still have seizures, but they're very mild compared to when they used to. So uh, y'all be in prayer uh, for him. This has just been an ongoing battle a lot of his life, and uh, so we're just praying for him in this time. Anyone else? All right. I uh, just want to give you an update on my mother. I uh, heard uh, results the committee met in MUSC, and uh, what they said is the uh, liver, it, uh, although it's, it's bad, it's not as bad to get the uh, surgery. The tips are the uh, organ transplant, so you have to, uh, like a mouse score, so he's at 10, whereas you need to be at like 20 or something to really go in and uh, do one of the other procedures. She is still on the waiting list for liver transplant, so uh, they'll continue to do the blood work periodically, and then, uh, of course, it, as it gets worse, uh, they can still make that decision, and good thing is she's on the liver transplant list, as of six, seven months ago, so it deteriorates uh, more and more. Uh, so it's somewhat of good news. Uh, so uh, that's definitely a, a hard procedure, either one of those, uh, so even harder than a, a kidney transplant. So um, y'all do be in prayer for them in this situation. Anyone else? Okay, prayer for the nation, okay. A new president sworn in today. I saw the uh, uh, just briefly the uh, Senate members uh, sworn in. So uh, yeah, pray for the nation for sure. And uh, nowhere, no matter where you are on the uh, political side, you, you pray for those God is allowed to be in a position and uh, praying for their success will initiate initiate our success. So you don't want them to fail. And I know. It, you mean sometimes maybe when some people say that, but you don't want them to fail because that would make us fail. So uh, we, we just pray that God will just uh, use and guide in this time. All right, if nothing else, let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we consult you. For God, you have not only the answers, but you have the comfort in times of need. Lord, we can seek you as a refuge. God, I pray we'd not forsake you and go on our own path and Lord that we would turn from your ways that we wouldn't go to the left the right that God we would stay on the straight and narrow and Lord even in there's times of thinking about or having wisdom or knowledge in a situation that we need to deal with from time to time God that you would just uh, make it evident that we walk in your peace and in your truth and I thank you so much God for the forgiveness of sins and Lord, for the people that are on this list uh, that are in need of prayer, in need of healing, as uh, the church, First Baptist, uh, North Augusta, Lord, we, we are praying for the church to uh, uh, just continue to minister to the person in the wreck, and Lord, uh, for him or her, whoever was in it, or whomever all together, Lord, I just pray, God, you heal them in this time of need. Lord, uh, we're praying for the First Baptist Church of Calpins as they are thinking about rebuilding and what that's going to look like and how that's going to be for them, Lord, that you would just continue uh, your consistent care, your loving kindness uh, through this situation. And Lord, for here, Foreman, as we are uh, inching closer, Lord, to getting into the sanctuary uh, through the renovation, through uh, the provisions that you have provided and for uh, the people that have just put in so much work and time and and taking time out of their schedule to do that, Lord, that you would uh, again work in a mighty way, Heavenly Father, to bring yourself glory. And, and when the pews come back new and shined up, Lord, Heavenly Father, we, we're praying for them right now that they'd have some uh, new visitors sit down in them. Lord, they'd have some more family members that haven't attended in a while, that they would uh, be excited, they would be energetic to see what's going on at Foreman Memorial Baptist Church of God, that you would. Get all the glory for all that you have done. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much. And I pray these things in Jesus' name.
Brother Matt's mother and father would just lift her up as she's dealing with deliver issues. My friend Scott, Father, we just hold him up. He's giving up. He's getting weak. Build the hedge of protection around him. Very dear friend, brother. And we know that you can do all things. Nothing is impossible for you. And I know it's in your time that you do all things. We can't put a time on one your time, we know that. You do all things in your time, and you never leave. And Father, a young lady, can I meet you, Sarah? You know our situation. She'll hurt you. When her seat you want, they take hold of your love. Father, our nation needs you now more than ever. There's strife between brothers and sisters and neighbors and it's it's pitiful that our nation is so torn. Because of political lies. We all need to come back together to seek your face. To seek your way. To bring peace and togetherness in this country. You know that it's written that if we would just turn from our wicked ways, seek your face, that you will heal our life. But we've got to turn from our way, our wicked ways and our and seek your face first before you do anything. And Father, if I've caused anybody to stumble, for a straight away, forgive me. We love you. I love you. And thank you, David, for the breath of your life. For some holy, powerful name of Jesus, I pray. And as well, I thank you for the name of David. We gather together and come and hear your word preach and be able to pray for people with the list that we have. We pray, Lord, that you do each and every one of them. Probably others that may not be on this list. We know you know about. We pray for them as well. We certainly pray for those who keep on this 
Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, I want to lift up a prayer request that came in through the website. Lord, uh, we want to pray for Melinda Nguyen, who has COVID. Uh, we want to uh, pray for Tina R., who has skin cancer. Uh, Sharon R., who has cancer and scans that are upcoming and will be a continual process. Melissa J.'s uh, mom rushed to the ER with COVID. Heavenly Father, we pray for these that are on the list and, and pray for Karen Rogers at Senate, Lord. Heavenly Father, you know these people by name. You know them well. You know them more than I do. You know the situation and the details that are in their lives. And Lord, that in, we pray for comfort. We pray for healing. We pray that your will would be done in a marvelous way so that you may get all the glory for all things done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I'll turn into your Bibles to uh, Psalms 35 tonight. Uh, Psalms 35 as we look over uh, the Psalms on Wednesday night. It's been a, a refreshing thing for me also, not uh, just you yourselves at times. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm called to feed, but... I definitely feed it myself and uh, just a feast on uh, God's Word and, and to continue to remember uh, David's heart that was just so uh, threaded together with the Lord in this time. And as we looked at Psalms 34 uh, last week, he, he talks about uh, uh, the righteousness that comes from God. And, and of course, here in Psalms 35, he reminds us that our standard is God. Not only is he our standard, but in fact, God is our redeemer. When I took my mother down to the uh, MUSC and I, we started going through all the talk and I've already taken her down to Columbia and uh, multiple appointments. I've told you before as pastor, you definitely become a medical doctor that uh, cannot prescribe any medicine or give surgeries. Uh, but I do understand that there are sometimes what you think you need, you don't need. Uh, understand it this way, and when you start thinking about liver transplants, uh, you might want one. You think you need one to continue to live, but in fact, a liver could not be compatible. Um, there's a chance that the liver could not be compatible, and then uh, your life could end even suddenly on the operating table or later on in life. You'd have a poor uh, way of living, a lifespan that just would not uh, seem to be any existence at all, would it? You know, sometimes you want a liver transplant and, and uh, your body just is not up to it. Whereas if they could prohibit you from getting the uh, liver, uh, you might actually uh, live longer just on the fact that you could not even endure the surgery, even though the liver could be compatible. Uh, there's times where it's just time to wait. As uh, my mother was told that it's not as severe as we thought, not that it's not bad, but it's not on the level that uh, needs surgery at this time. And sometimes when we come to the Lord, we come to him in our prayer life and we tell him what we want. And in fact, sometimes we think we are praying and asking God uh, to deliver us or uh, God to give us this. It would make us happier and make us more, more joyful. But in times he says, wait. Uh, sometimes he says, there's something to learn through this situation. Sometimes he does answer and then he makes a situation better. He redeems you. He forgives you. But there's times, as we're going to see in Psalms 35, that David is going to continue to plead with God. Now I admit, coming all the way up from Psalms 1 to 35, it just seems redundant upon David's prayer, does it not? Free me from my enemies. Deliver me from evil. Show your righteousness. Be that standard, God. Don't let them mock me. Don't let them ridicule me. And you'll continue to see a consistent pattern. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll just say, David, boy, you sure do complain a lot. David, stop praying. Okay, you haven't learned your lesson the last time? Well, in fact, have we learned our lesson the last time? Uh, that's why we continue to read God's Word. That's why we continue to come to church. That's why we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Because we continue to be reminded of God's faithfulness and love. Well, David here is going to get on the path of uh, consulting the Lord. 
Uh, I, I have never seen too many people that have gotten in trouble for praying too much. Have you? So when we start thinking about David and his repetition of prayers, it seems obvious. Uh, some would say it's Captain Obvious. Uh, you know, God is the Redeemer. God is the Lord. Uh, but it's okay that David has went to the Lord with these requests. Uh, sometimes if you're not careful, Satan will isolate you as individuals and you will get to the place where you're thinking, I'm just going to complain or I'm not going to give it to God. God's not going to answer and you isolate yourself on an island instead of just going to him and getting it over with. He knows what you're going through. He loves you. And by the way, God's not too weak to answer any prayer of yours and or to listen. And so we see David here. He is saying in verse one, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of buckler and shield and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be ashamed to dishonor who seek my life. Let those be turned back and humiliated who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Without cause they dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction come upon him unaware. And let the net which he had hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. And my soul shall rejoice in the Lord. It shall extol in his salvation. All my bones will say, Lord, who is like you, who delivers the afflicted from him, who is too strong for him, and the afflicted and the needy from him who robs him. Of course, we are seeing that David has given his request to the Lord to deliver him. Uh, there's going to be people on this earth that you think are going to deliver you, and it's going to be hogwash. At the end of the day, the only one that truly delivers your soul and gives you peace and gives you joy is you going to God for it. Again, it's okay to ask a brother or sister in Christ to pray with you. It's okay to talk with your brothers and sisters. But my friends, we got to get to the place where we go to God directly for our deliverance. Because at the end of the day, no matter how big David's army was, it was God that gave the victory. So we see here, although David is in a dark place, meaning he just feels isolated from God's deliverance. However, he goes to God because he knows he can give it. And you know what? God does that. These enemies have stretched out nets for him. Uh, they want to uh, endanger him. They want him to fall into a hole with lions. I mean, uh, all the dangers are around him. Uh, but what seems to be not on the mind of the wicked people is that their destruction is coming. And no matter how much they deceive, no matter how much they conspire, God gets the last laugh. God gets the holiness that what? Cleanses sin. You see, we know in the New Testament, it says that men, women, children, nobody on this earth are our enemies. It says only principalities, spiritual beings, stuff you do not see. It's not flesh and blood. It's not your brother and sister. It's not the wicked person down the street. You know who the ultimate enemy is? Sin. Sin is the ultimate enemy. So when someone is in their sin and has not come to Christ for their salvation, guess what? They are an enemy of God because of that S word, sin. And they haven't been another S word, saved. So they are condemned and the wrath of God remains on them. Now they can come to Christ. Now even after you come to Christ now, and if you develop some kind of habit of sin or any kind of thing like that, guess what? Uh, God has to deal with that because again, that is still the enemy of God. It's not you as a person, but the sin that dwells in you that he doesn't like. He wants to make us holy. He wants to bring holiness in our life. And how does he do that? Well, David is not confessing that he has 
sin in his life that he's running for danger, but he's running from wicked people that do have sin in their life and there's not a godly bone in their body and they're pursuing him and he wants remedy. He doesn't want destruction to come upon him. He don't want deception to come upon him. So what God is doing in the wicked people and what he's going to do is he's going to shine light on the subject. Now they seem to be getting away with it temporarily, but David knows the testimony of God really matters. God's reputation is not necessarily on the line because of human beings. I wouldn't go that far or be far-fetched in saying that uh, God's reputation depends upon you. Uh, God holds his own. Uh, but I do say this. What David is saying is, God, show them who you are. This is the same reputation that Elijah said, show them, God, if your God is really real, you false prophets, uh, let's make this big ditch around this sacrifice and let's burn up some wood or whatever you want to do and we'll just set this on fire so hot and let's just, you call out to your gods, I'll let you get first dip on the deal. And you call out to them, of course we know they just cried out and their gods were not hearing, so what did they do? Uh, well, we'll just scrape ourselves with some pottery and just cut ourselves and then maybe God will see that we're hurting ourselves and being a sacrifice and then he'll come down and Elijah <laughs> Is that uh, back in a distance just screaming a little loud? He said, he can't hear you. Speak up. Just speak up. He can't hear you. And you know what happened? When it was Elijah's turn, it wasn't Elijah's turn, by the way. It was God's turn Amen. to prove his reputation, to prove his existence, to prove that mankind will be in reverence of him one way and one day or another. So how did he do that? He brought down the fire. And you know what happened to the prophets afterward? They were all killed, were they not? So we see here, David knows about God's faithfulness from other people, from Moses, from other people in the Torah, that God was faithful and, the, and there was evil, and there was destruction. And, and, and David knew there was a pattern in prayer that if you go to God and seek Him, if you're pure, your motives are pure, then righteousness will prevail. It might not be seen in your time, on your timetable, but God will remain faithful. So he is saying, show up, God, and show out. Now look in verses 11 and following. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. They repay me evil for good to the bereavement of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer kept returning to my bosom. I went about as though it were my friend or brother. I bowed down mourning as one who sorrows for a mother. But at my stumbling, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Uh, the smiters whom I did not know uh, gathered together against me. They slandered me without ceasing, like godless jesters at a feast. They gnashed at me with their teeth. How long, O oh Lord, will you look on to this? Rejoice, my soul, from their ravages, and my only life from the lions. I will give you thanks in great congregation. I will praise you among a mighty throng. Do not let those who are wrongfully my enemies rejoice over me, nor let those who hate me without cause wink maliciously. For they do not speak peace, but they devise, what? Deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. So again, he comes back to these people seeming to get away with things time and time again. Uh, they wink, maliciously talk about me. They slander me. But God, you know what? I can't control them, but you can take care of the situation. So if I put it in God's hand, because this prayer, he says, is kept, it kept returning to his bosom. It kept returning to his heart. You know, there's a prayer that you, you may pray for your kids, your grandkids, or whomever it may be, your friends or relatives. And there's this prayer that just keeps returning to your heart. It's like God's wanting you to communicate with him about this prayer. And it's like uh, God says in his word that he will give us the desires of our heart. 
And a lot of times God prompts our hearts with those desires to do something about it. He puts it in our heart for a reason. He puts that prayer in our hearts so that we would come to Him. And it's not a coincidence that God might put somebody on your mind to call, to text, to write an envelope to, a letter, or whatever it is. Uh, it, God has placed that on your heart for a particular reason. And what He is doing is channeling the Holy Spirit through you so that He works on His behalf through you to work and encourage somebody else. David's prayer is not just for him alone. It's for the nation of Israel. He wants God's victory to remain. He is faithful. Although he brings discipline, for we know that the Israelites went into Babylonian exile for a while, a long time, years upon years. And they got caught off guard, of course, with the Assyrians. And what is God doing? He works in a way to discipline brothers and sisters in the Lord. But in this case, David is not sinning. Uh, he has actually just had this evil and the wickedness surround me. He has this petition upon his heart. He has thanksgiving and praise. He has went from, uh, God, uh, please come to my deliverance again. I need you again, like God has thrown off guard, because he's not. He's never off guard when you come to him and say you need his assistance. That is the prayer that God answers, by the way. When you say, I need you. I tell you, when you come to him and say, I am depleted in my strength and I need you. So David here is coming to him again. These enemies, they seem to be rejoicing over conquering these little battles, whatever they're doing, how they're setting nets and they think they're going to win. But at the end of the day, like Billy Sunday said, payday, someday. And so we see here, these enemies cannot rejoice over nothing that they have done. Because at the end, God is going to get the victory. You know, sometimes God allows things in our society. He allows things in our culture. He allows people to uh, seem to think that they're getting away with something. But you know what's happening. There's just a cup that's filling up with God's wrath eventually it's going to overflow. Eventually, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, God's had enough. And he sends fire, and there's nobody that's going to pray him out of that, by the way. Uh, there has been times that God has relented his anger, we see in the Old Testament, where uh, God said, I'm just going to go down and destroy these people. And people prayed, and God said, okay, if they turn away from their anger. Sometimes you just need to know that God means business. And when he means business, it's time to either respond one way or the other. But there is a time, though, when God means business and nobody can pray to him to change his will. Now, he's had enough. In this situation, it seems to be agonizing. And again, when looking at David's life, it's running from Saul, uh, running from army. In Psalms 34, uh, some historical background. You remember when David acted crazy? Uh, to escape, uh, you know, and they're like, man, what's wrong with this guy? You know, I mean, he's acting crazy, so he acting crazy to escape. Uh, David went through a lot of things, but what we can't complain about in life, suffering, pain, circumstances, God works all things together for those that love him in Christ Jesus. Amen? And so what he is working together in David's life is, Developing him to be a leader. Do you know how you be a leader, uh, become a leader? You go through trials. You go through tribulations. You go through uh, revealing of your weaknesses. And God brings them to the forefront to make you stronger. And so what he's doing with David is, David could not, by the way, uh, you can take this to the bank, without the problems and the suffering and Saul chasing after him, it wouldn't have got him to a place of keeping him humble to be Israel's king. He had to have what? Strength. And how do you show strength? How do you have peace? You do it with strength. And that's through leadership. And how did he do it? He developed it through these trials. Uh, although he didn't cause those on his own, uh, these trials came into his life. And he responded 
And he responded, we see faithfully by praying to the Lord. Now look in verses 21 and following. They opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. You have seen it, O Lord. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Uh, stir up yourself and make a way to my right and to my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. And do not let them rejoice over me. Again, we see here in verse 24, before I go on in reading, it's very interesting that he is saying, just like Job did, same way, God, bring me to your courtroom. I, I, I just, I plead for a hearing before you. If, I, if I've done something wrong, uh, I want you to be the accuser. I want you, because my friends, by the way, they're saying some bad things about me and putting my character through the dirt. Uh, but, but, but God, would you please uh, call me into your court? If I've done something wrong, I'd, if I'm paying for it right now, just show it to me. I, I want you to be the truth. Now listen to this. You see what we see here? Is that David is saying, bring any accusation, anything that I have done, search my heart, and God, you be my judge. These wicked people are not going to be my judge. And this Job pretty much signified, these friends of mine that are falsely accusing me of sin, they're not going to be my judge. So what does David, what was Job left with doing? Praying to God. God will allow you to get to the end of yourself that you, your friends, relatives, nobody's advice, although it might be crucial, it might be good, but God wants us to come to him because what? God is the only judge of righteousness. God is the only one that we can rejoice in and have rejoicing and joy and peace. Uh, accomplishments will fade. Degrees will fade. Uh, the only one that will uplift us to give us true joy and peace is the Lord. And sometimes, I know it's in my life too at times, boy, we just wait to the last minute sometimes, do we not? I, I can look over my spiritual life uh, of coming to Christ since 2003, and I can look at some uh, spiritual markers where I did things right, and there's sometimes I just, why did I just pray right away and get it over with? Why did I just go to the Lord? Well, David here, he, he has learned a thing or two about a thing or two. So he is going to the Lord. And verse 25 says, Do not let them say in their heart, Aha, our desire. Do not let them say we have swallowed him up. Uh, let those be ashamed and humiliated altogether who rejoice at my distress. Let those be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves over me. Let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication. And let them say continually, The Lord be magnified who delights in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall declare your righteousness and your praise all day long. Again, success is being faithful to the Lord. It's not a paper of accomplishments that you can write down. Success is being faithful and pure in your walk with the Lord. You want to be successful? I have nothing wrong with anybody getting in degrees. I have nothing wrong with anyone uh, wanting to build a new house or a new car. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've walked over stage plenty of time to get degrees, and I felt empty. They're like, I worked all that for that piece of paper. Really? And I, and I come away, not that it's not something to complain about, it's just it didn't bring me what I thought it would when I got that piece of paper. It didn't bring me that joy, that peace. And it was a reminder to me, yes, I'm thankful, and I, have, I can have pride and accomplishments uh, to a certain degree, but that pride met, better not ever go over God's head. And see, God keeps us low so he can use us. You understand that? He keeps you humble. And if that's going to take a circumstance to keep you humble, to keep you useful, then so be it. So we see here, David is rejoicing in the Lord. He realized that he can delight in him because God's bringing the prosperity in his life. If God's going to annihilate these wicked people coming against him, anybody that's become an enemy to David, they have in fact become an enemy to God. And he is saying, deliver me, bring prosperity, God, to your name. Let nations see 
that you exist. And you cannot pick on God's children for too long. God will have enough of it. And so David continues to praise him, even in his sufferings, even when all the circumstances seem to be one-sided, and he's been faithful. It's not time to give up, church. It's time to remain faithful. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your dear children, Lord. Those that are online that are going through circumstances, and God, I'm not prideful and say I understand completely what they're going through. But God, I know you, and that we can come to you with whatever is on our heart, what is that, whatever is on our mind. God, we can cry out to you, knowing that you rescue the perishing. Lord, God, you go after those that don't want to pursue you, but you've been pursuing them all their life. Heavenly Father, if there's anyone online today that just seems to just want to throw in the towel and give up, because circumstances just seem to be too unbearable. Heavenly Father, come to their need right now. And we pray these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.